Welcome to a special edition of Biz Asia America. I'm Mike Walter. And I'm Philip Yen. We have every angle of the strategic and economic dialogue here in Washington, and this is what we have so far. There have already been several agreements on climate change, from carbon emissions to vehicle standards. We'll run through those in just a minute. Also on cybersecurity, while we haven't heard many public comments yet on this, you can bet it's a topic of discussion behind closed doors in light of the recent Edward Snowden incident and everything that followed. Okay, we've also got much more on the economic front as well. That will be a very key topic for both sides. Competition will be a key issue. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said that that is a good thing. He said competition makes each country stronger. We will also explore trade relations between the United States and China, how to make it stronger, how to grow it, and also how to resolve the dispute. Our special coverage of the fifth strategic and economic dialogue here in Washington. Of course, we're talking about that tonight. Special attention already been given to climate change. Both countries have agreed on five new initiatives to combat greenhouse gas emissions and develop new technology. Let's join Nathan, Nathan King rather live at the site of these talks. That's the U.S. State Department. Nathan. That's right, Mike. Following on from that, the shirt sleeve summit in California between President Xi and Obama, where they agreed to cut hydrofluorocarbons to an equivalent amount of two years of the joint output of both countries. This five point plan, green plan, goes even deeper and also seems to put aside the finger pointing of the past, where the U.S. was labeled the world's biggest polluter, China a gobbler of natural resources as it raced to development. This more mature approach if implemented, is meant to have a global impact. Around the table, China and the U.S., who between them account for nearly half of the world's emission of greenhouse gases. This new plan aims to put both countries at the forefront of energy conservation and transformation. The goals? Cut emissions from heavy duty and other vehicles using fuel efficiency targets and efficient vehicles capture emissions from coal plants using new technology. Together, the U.S. and China amount to over 40 percent of global coal consumption. Increase energy efficiency in buildings, industry and transport. Buildings alone account for over 30 percent of energy use in both countries and improving data collection on greenhouse gas emissions to help plan for better climate change policy. And lastly, promoting smart power grids. Energy grids themselves account for over 30 percent of carbon emissions, making them more efficient will pay off. With record high temperatures and increasingly severe weather events in the U.S., plus pollution concerns rising in Beijing, both countries are aiming to become leaders, no longer laggards, on climate change. How will we curb climate change? How will we pioneer new energy technology, which is, in fact, the response to climate change? Energy policy is the solution to climate change. Both China and the United States see ourselves as the biggest emitters. So we need to cooperate on climate change that is conducive to everyone. This new joint U.S.-Chinese plan, of course, is ambitious and will take decades of commitment to implement fully. But the plan is being seen here as an example of how, when the world's two biggest economies work together, they can have a potential effect on a global scale. You know, di diplomats here are saying this uh, agreement on climate change really is pointing to a maturing of a relationship. And it's really interesting that uh, at the outset of the U.S. strategic and economic uh, dialogue, Vice Premier Wang Yang has said, you know, decades ago we used to call each other names. I'm not going to uh, detail them on the air because they were uh, pretty specific and could offend Chinese and American audiences alike. He said, now we're not doing that. We're, we've learned that that doesn't work. We're looking for a more mature relationship. So we've had progress on climate change. If everything went along the same way this week, uh, I think it would be labeled a big success indeed. We'll have to wait and see. Nathan, uh, this does come at a somewhat tense time, though, I mean, with the Snowden disclosures, and there's been some back and forth on a number of various issues. Um, do you set the tone for us, though. The, do the discussions seem friendly? Yeah, they do seem friendly, actually, and uh, also connected. Uh, people know each other here. They've, they've built up relationships uh, in the past. Joe Biden said uh, that uh, he, is, he has met a number of times with, with officials. John Kerry has built up uh, relations over the years as well. John Kerry had an emotional moment when he talked about his wife being hospitalized. You know, that's why he's leaving the talks early. And he said he got lots of uh, uh, messages of support from the delegation and seemed to get very emotional about it. And, uh, you know, if they, we're going to talk more 
more about this in the programme, but if there's a prize to be handed out for uh, the person who's cracking the most jokes, I think it'll be Vice Premier uh, Wang Yang. He really seems to be revelling in this uh, up-close and personal uh, way of doing business. Nathan King, live for us at the State Department. Thanks so much. And of course, you'll be back in the next hour. As well.